let's solve this question which has been asked in gate 2019 we are given a code snippet with two functions we are given a code snippet with two functions r and main we have to find the value to be displayed on execution of this entire program since main is the starting point of execution we will begin our analysis with the for loop given here because this is the first line in the main method before we proceed let's discuss a thing or two about local static variables we have one in the function r as you can see static int num equal to 7 and it yeah it has the name num why am i calling it local because it is declared inside the body of this function had this variable num been declared outside any of these functions given here it would have been a global static variable then its properties would have differed slightly from what it would have in this case so here we can say that num is a local static variable because it is declared inside the body of function r local static variables have two key properties we have to know these two properties in order to be able to solve this question correctly and what are those two properties so i'll write it down for you local static variables have two Key properties and what are they the first one is they are initialized they are initialized only once so if the if a function contains a local static variable and that function is called multiple times the local static variable will be initialized only the first time the function is called starting from the second function call the initialization statement will be overlooked the second property is they retain their values between function calls retain their values between function calls so these are the two properties of local static variables now what do i mean by the second property that they retain their values between function calls see unlike local non-static variables which are destroyed once the function in which they are declared returns a local static variable will not only retain the variable which is declared as static in the main memory but also retain the value the last value that was present in that variable once the function was returning control so i hope this point is clear i'll repeat it once again see the point number two is a local static variable would retain its value between function calls in order to understand this point we need to know the difference between a local static variable and a local non-static variable what would a local non-static variable do or how would a local non-static variable behave a local non-static variable would be taken out from memory or would be destroyed once the function in which it is declared returns control to the calling function but a local static variable would not only maintain that variable a local static variable would not only remain in the main memory when the function returns but also the value in that local static variable the last value that it possessed as the function was returning will also be retained so these are the two points that we need to keep in mind in order to be able to solve this question correctly now let's move on to the output examination so what we'll do is we'll ana analyze the main function step by step we'll go line by line so the first line as we can see is a for statement and the for statement as we know has three parts this is the initialization this is the initialization of the for loop this is the 
test condition of the for loop as long as the test condition is evaluated to be true only then the body of the for loop which in this case contains only one statement which is the printf will be executed and this is my updation so updation can involve any change in the loop control variable here we do not have any loop control variable here in all the three cases in all the three parts in fact we have calls to the function r so let's see how this for loop will behave we know that the initialization part in a for loop is carried out exactly once so when we are initializing the for loop or when we are carrying out the initialization part the function r is invoked what we need to do is we also need to maintain the value of this variable num depending on the value of num this program will behave now see i am invoking the function r so when i am invoking the function r the control will be transferred to the first line of the function r see the function r is invoked this is a call to the function r which takes no arguments that's why the function call also has empty parentheses so control is transferred to the first line of this function that is static in num equal to 7 this is the first time our variable num comes into existence and it is given a value of 7 and in the next line we have return num minus minus what we need to be careful is it is num minus minus that means it is a case of post decrement it is not pre decrement mind you had this minus minus this decrement operator been at the beginning of the variable num then the output of this program would have been different but here it is after the variable num so what will happen is the current value of num which is 7 will be returned and after the return of the value the value of num will be decremented so return num minus minus what will happen the value of num which in this case is 7 will be returned to the calling program which program or which function has called this function r the main method the main method has called the function r so the value of num which is 7 will be returned to main and after the return statement is carried out the value of num will be decremented by 1 so the value of num which is 7 is returned here at this point and the value of num is decremented to 6 but here as you can see there is no variable to catch this return value so it is probably of no use not probably it is of no use because had there been a variable here to catch that return value then we could have made some use of it but here the return value that is sent back from the function r to the function main will be unavailable to any of the variables so after the initialization is carried out we'll move on to the test condition and again in the test condition what we have is another invocation of the function r so the control will again be transferred you might wonder that the control should be transferred to the first line of this function r but here is the catch remember local static variables are initialized only once that means i am calling this function r for the second time this statement which is carrying out the initialization will be skipped and will directly go to the return statement and the return statement is again telling us to return the value of num what is the current value of num 6 so 6 is returned in place of this value i mean in place of this function call what we get is the value 6 and after the return statement is carried out successfully the value of num is decremented to 5 now see when 6 is returned in place of this test condition what does it mean it means that the test condition is true how do, how can we say this remember in c whenever we are checking any condition it is considered to be true if the value is non zero any non zero value is considered to be true and a value of zero uh, an exact value of zero is considered to be false here when we invoked the function r in the test condition part of the loop the value that we got was 6 which is non zero that means the test condition is true and since the test condition is true we will move inside the body of the loop where we have a printf statement and this printf statement what is it doing it is telling us to print a value but the value 
that we are going to print of course it's going to be an integer as you can see the format specifier given to us is percent d that means we are trying to print an integer but the thing is the value that we'll be printing will be depending on the value returned by the function r because we are invoking the function r once again so when we invoke this function r at this point what happens is control is transferred to the return statement this statement is skipped static int num equal to 7 will be skipped because I repeat once again, static variables are initialized only once. Local static variables are initialized only once. So once this control comes to this return statement, the value of 5 will be returned. So the, the value that will be printed will be 5. So my output, I've got my first output which is a value of 5 and after the return statement was carried out successfully the value of num is decremented to 4 so after the decrement operation where do we go see for loop has a specific pattern first the initialization will take place then the test condition is carried out if the test condition is true we execute the body of the loop after we execute the body of the loop we go to the updation part and what is the updation part telling us the updation part is again invoking the function r so if the function r is invoked Again, we are taken back to this return statement and we are returned a value of 4, which is the current value of num. And after the return statement is carried out successfully, due to this decrement operator, we will be decrementing the value of num to 3. See, this is post decrement, right? So after the return statement is carried out, then the decrement operation will take place. Had the minus minus operator here, the decrement operator been before the variable num, then we would have first decremented the value of num and then gone on to return the decremented value. But again, in the updation part, we find that there is no variable to catch this return value of four. As a result, it is of no use. After the updation, we move on to the test condition once again, where the function r is invoked. Again, we are taken to this return statement, which will return the current value of num. The current value of num happens to be 3. And 3, when substituted in place of the test condition, is a true value, giving us a true condition. The test condition evaluates to be true, and we move on to the body of the loop. But before moving on to the body of the loop, what we must keep in mind is the num variable has to be decremented by 1. So 3 becomes 2 now. Num becomes 2. Now we are taken inside the body of the loop once again and we are printing the value. What value we are printing? A function call. Again, we are taken to this return statement. The current value of num, which is 2, will be returned in place of this printf statement. So we are going to print another value, which happens to be 2. Once 2 is printed, remember, once this return statement was carried out, you have to decrement the value by 1. And after I decrement the value of 1, what happens is we have printed the value, we go on to the updation part. After the body of the loop completes, we go on to the updation. The updation invokes the function r once again, and we are given a value of 1. And finally, the value of num is decremented to 0. Now this part is interesting. Value of num is 0, and we are in the test condition now. We are here at the test condition. The updation was carried out. We have moved on to the test condition. The test condition is invoking the function r. If the test condition is invoking the function r, we will be taken to this statement, return num. What is the value of num here? The value of num is 0. So the value that is substituted in place of this function call will be 0. And what did I mention just a while ago? 0 means false value, which results in our test condition to be evaluated as false and if the test condition is evaluated to be false the loop will terminate and we are taken to this statement return zero that means you're returning a value of zero to the operating system and it brings an end to the program execution and also just for your knowledge after the value of zero was returned from this statement from this return statement the value of num was decremented by minus one although we have no use of this value anymore as the program has completed its execution. So the out of the four options which are given to us, the correct answer is 52, option B. So you take a moment, if you are able to understand it in the first go, very good, or you can rewind it, play the video once again. Even then, if you are unable to understand, leave a comment in the section given below and I'll try to help you out in the best way possible. I hope this helps. Thank you.